Your book identifies the term degrees of freedom as the number of ways in which any given unit of control is capable of moving. The Russian scientist Bernstein wondered how we are able to produce coordinated movements given we have so many degrees of freedom to control. He labeled this issue the degrees of freedom problem and is probably the most fundamental of all motor control questions. If we understood how the nervous system chose from all possible degrees of freedom to produce coordinated movement, we would be much closer to understanding the interaction between our nervous system and our skeletal muscular system. To understand degrees of freedom in its most basic form, let's look how we can control some of the joints in our body. For instance, in this movement we see that the elbow has only one degree of freedom flexion extension. The same applies to the knee joint. The shoulder joint has multiple degrees of freedom. Flexion extension, adduction abduction, and circumduction. Here we can see the wrist can move in flexion extension, adduction abduction, and circumduction. Thus it has multiple degrees of freedom. The key to understanding the concept of degrees of freedom is to focus on the fact that each direction of a joint's movement needs to be controlled by the nervous system. The assumption is that controlling a joint with one degree of freedom is easier than controlling a joint that has two or more degrees of freedom.